You're listening to NBC Sports Radio. Weekends. This is Speaking of Sports with Jim Daniels on NBC Sports Radio, where every day is game day. And now, it's Jim Daniels. Good morning and thanks for joining us for Speaking of Sports on NBC Sports Radio and NBCSportsRadio.com. We appreciate you making us a part of your Father's Day. If that applies to you, happy Father's Day. Take full advantage. I encourage you. Uh, the show is brought to you by Granger, serving you with the products you need to help keep your facility running. Call, click, or stop by today. Granger for the ones who get it done. Well, it's time to get it done all over the place on this Father's Day. A lot on the line, and let's break some of that down for you. Uh, starting with the NBA Finals, Game 7 of the NBA Finals. We love a Game 7 in any sport, but uh, in NBA basketball, uh, it's going to be an exciting one between these two teams. It's a rematch of last year. We all know what's at stake. We've been doing this for a couple of weeks. Game 7 comes down to this. ABC, 8 p.m. Eastern tonight, and uh, we'll see whether it's Steph Curry and the rest of the defending world champion Golden State Warriors are with or whether LeBron James will be able to lead his Cleveland Cavaliers and the entire city of Cleveland to a championship level that they have not seen since the days of Jim Brown on the field. So, yeah, quite a bit at stake tonight. You know, I ran across uh, this stat that I wanted to uh, that I wanted to bring up in, in regards to this. Before we play Game 7, before we know what the outcome is, there's lots of talk about legacy and is this a failed season uh, for the Warriors, if they don't win the championship, uh, is LeBron wearing the goat horns uh, if they don't finally deliver a championship there? Jerry West, the logo of the NBA, Jerry West played 14 seasons in the NBA. Nine times in his 14 seasons, Jerry West Lakers made the finals. They lost eight of those times. He got his only NBA title in the Lakers' record setting 1971 72 season. But the championships never defined him. I think these are words that uh, LeBron James may find comfort in should they not be able to uh, get the job done tonight at Oracle Arena. But uh, all eyes, maybe as many as 30 million sets of eyes, will be watching this game tonight uh, on ABC. It's just uh, exactly what we hope for when we uh, set out to uh, start these things. Uh, The other big deal, if you will, on this Father's Day Sunday is the U.S. Open. The U.S. Open is at Oakmont, and uh, boy, you got some people feeling some pressure. First of all, Rory McIlroy felt the pressure so much that as soon as he finished his second round, which put him at eight over par for the tournament and two shots uh, over the cut line, he just bolted Oakmont and said, see you later. No speaking to the media, no nothing. His first round of 77 pretty much put him out of it right there. But, uh, you know, no Rory McIlroy in the final. That's bad for golf fans, and I suppose... Uh, bad for golf itself to not have the number three player and, and one of the uh, fan favorites not in the field. But I'll tell you what, the numbers are scary for some other people, too, because as we look at the uh, way this sets up, Shane Lowry, who is uh, actually off to a quick start here. I can add to this now. He started the day at five under par. He's made a couple of quick birdies. Shane Lowry now is at seven under par. That's four shots clear of Dustin Johnson, Lee Westwood, uh, and Sergio Garcia. Uh, Lee Westwood is 0 for 72 in majors. Sergio is 0 for 70 in majors. And DJ is 0 for 28 in majors. Now, again, uh, Shane Lowry going to have to play 22 holes today because they had to finish because of darkness. And so Shane Lowry playing 22 holes today actually needed the, to get off to a great start. And he has done just exactly that, birding the first two holes. So, yeah, just clicked over here uh, to see that. Yeah, that's exactly where he is. Coverage for the U.S. Open, if you're, uh, if you're into this, uh, the Golf Channel it has beautiful stuff for you that has just started just a couple of minutes ago. They'll go from uh, now until 11 a.m. Eastern, and then Fox will have the rest of your U.S. Open coverage from 11 to uh, 7 or 8 p.m., however long it takes them uh, to get it done. But it uh, should be an exciting finish. Uh, Ichiro, the Marlins, uh, out former Mar- yeah, the Mar- Marlins former Mariners outfielder, uh, has reached the hit plateau of 42.57 this week to pass Pete Rose. Or did he? Uh, because this is a combined number of uh, hits from Japan and the major leagues. I can't imagine, as a matter of fact, Pete Rose is not uh, pleased to hear people say that he's the new hits king. I don't know. How do you come down on that? Uh, Pete uh, betted on baseball. Ichiro played in another league. 
Not sure you come down on that, but I know fans have been debating this one, whether Ichiro is uh, the new hits leader in Major League Baseball or not. Uh, this note from the uh, world of uh, NFL football, maybe you could call it fantasy football. How about gambling football? The New York legislature has passed a bill legalizing daily fantasy. We've said uh, for a long time on this program that all you need to do is share a little bit more of the pie and make sure the right people are getting theirs, and you'll be good to go on Friday. Uh, well, both houses of the New York legislature passed the bill, and uh, if signed into law by the uh, governor, would make daily fantasy legal again in the Empire State. New York Daily News uh, contributing to that story. So don't see any reason to stand in the way of that. Uh, Rio de Janeiro is really in tough spot here. The acting governor of Rio de Janeiro has uh, stated the, that he has declared a state of financial disaster, so he has more leeway to manage the state's uh, resources with just a couple of months to go with Brazil hosting the Olympic Games. This uh, really looks like it's a tough time for everyone down there. You've had players pulling out all over the place. You've had people accused of uh, illegal uh, drug use, and uh, they've been disqualified. The 2016 Summer Olympics down in Rio are scheduled for August 5 through the 21st. Uh, but, boy, they have seen their share of problems down there, not the least of which is the Zika virus, which has probably scared off a great deal of people. And how about Robert Kraft as an investor to, in, in a bid to buy the UFC? We've heard over the past couple of months that uh, the uh, UFC could be up for sale. They're accepting bids for a potential sale. Is said to be uh, somewhere between, or the Kraft Group has agreed to put up 25 to $50 million. I mean... Sounds like good to business move to me. If you got an extra fifty million dollars to throw around and uh, get in on that deal, Robert Kraft. I mean, we all know he's a shrewd businessman. He's done a heck of a job with the Patriots over the years. And a tip of the cap to Ron Caps, friend of the program in the drag racing world. If fifty truly is the new four, uh, fifty, or maybe even thirty. <laughs> Uh, then 51-year-old Ron Caps is proving he's got what it takes. The driver of the Don Shoemaker Racing NAPA Napa Funny Car is enjoying one of his best seasons in 20 years. I've known Ron for a really long time. Uh, he has really put in the work out there, and uh, he's the points leader. Still a long way to go in this season, but uh, our uh, thoughts with Ron Caps as he uh, goes after uh, another championship at a place that he knows well coming up this weekend. All right, coming up on the program, we have great things for you today, not the least of which is uh, Mike Ditka. NFL Hall of Famer, he'll be with us. And Rick Horrell will be with us coming up next. It's NBC Sports Radio and NBC Sports Radio's mobile app. No bigger game day than this Father's Day for 2016. Game 7 in the NBA, U.S. Open and the PGA Tour. Wow, we got a lot going on. We'll get the professor on the line here in just a second. First of all, the show is brought to you by Granger, serving you with the products you need to help keep your facility running. Call, click, or stop by today. Granger, for the ones who get it done. And uh, as I said, my goodness, you got Father's Day and uh, U.S. Open final round, Game 7 of the NBA, and where do we find Rick Horrell? On vacation in the U.K., what's up with that? Hey, I'm working. You could call it vacation, but I'm, I'm studying English golf for a whole variety of reasons. So, listen, if the IRS hears it, I am working. And, uh, and then I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be at golf all next week. Uh, I'll be back uh, the following week, so I'll be doing it live from the mainland next week. But, uh, yeah, thanks for asking. Great. So this call is costing me extra because I'm having to call over to the U.K. Fabulous. Uh, as I said, the 116th rendition of the U.S. Open Championship uh, is underway. Final round coming up, according to the United States Golf Association, uh, Oakmont Country Club's Ninth U.S. Open Championship is estimated to have $135 million in economic impact on the region there in Pennsylvania. Is that all golf clubs and Jordan Spieth T-shirts? Yeah, you know, that's, it's interesting. Uh, J Jordan Spieth, uh, all of the folks are really promoting this event very, very well. And, uh, and you know, the, the weather obviously didn't cooperate really well early in the week. It's gotten better. $135 million economic impact. They're expected, all told, about 215,000 spectators sell out for almost 30 straight years. Here's the other thing. You know, you and I take notice. The entries this year were a little over 10,000, and most submissions in U.S. Open history. Now, because it's open, if you and I want to apply, uh, we can actually get in the tournament. Uh, we just have to qualify. That, that's, the, that's the little okay. thing, by the way. Uh, but $700 million annual wage income, nearly $2.5 in total economic boost. Uh, for the golf industry 
and clearly another exciting major. Yeah, no doubt about that. Let's go to another major, and that's the NBA Finals. There is an off-court battle going on uh, in this year's NBA Finals. No, I'm not talking about the matchup between LeBron and Steph Curry, but the quickly intensifying battle between Nike and Under Armour, right? Yeah, you know, uh, Under Armour chalks up nearly a 30% revenue gain from last year. Uh, Nike only eight and a half, but they're the big boys, so they don't have to grow that fast. Right. And still, uh, UA is just 15% of the $35 billion in revenue that Nike spends. But yet, Nike generates about $2.5 billion in free cash. That, that's an economic term, meaning they can spend more money. And, and so here's the bottom line. LeBron and everybody else, clearly Nike, and Tony Romo, uh, Curry, Brady, Spieth, as you said, a lot of other guys under armor. But everybody wins because the big three, Adidas, Nike, Under Armour, all bid against each other, meaning more money for athletes, for schools, for teams, for leagues. And the sneaker wars is bountiful for everybody else. <laughs> to say the least, right? We talk the business of sports with the professor Rick Horrell every week uh, here on NBC Sports Radio. Let's talk tennis for a second. Serena Williams, $29.8 million in earnings over the past 12 months. Wow, let that sink in. Has finally pushed her past Maria Sharapova as the world's highest paid female athlete over that 12-month span. I would have thought that Serena was already ahead of Sharapova. Uh, she seems to have won a lot more, right? Right? Yeah, but over the last few years, Sharapova's endorsements have been bigger. But I got to tell you, I'm here uh, at that uh, Wimbledon warm-up uh, tennis tournament in Queens mm-hmm. Club, a lot of people on both sides, men's and women's, talking about the demise of Maria Sharapova and the you know voluntary uh, drugs that uh, that she took. You, you could you could be sympathetic for her because she said it was a big mistake. I'm not sure it is or not. But a two-year suspension, she'll appeal it. Some say she'll get less, but does she come back at all? And the bottom line is most people here don't think so. Wow, interesting. Now, the ITF has suspended, as you mentioned, uh, 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 Maria Sharapova for two years after that positive test. How much does she stand to lose over this uh, ruling? Well, you know, she may she may lose uh, her endorsements, $34, $35 million over two years. 16, 17 million a year. So, so, and, and then there's the residual problem of what happens to that little asterisk when she does retire. It may be 50, 60, 70 million dollars when we're all said and done. So it's a very, very expensive violation for Maria Sharpo. Yeah, boy, gosh, I can't imagine. 35 million over uh, this two year span. That's incredible. All right, uh, let's talk about Donald Trump. Well, let's talk about a ripple effect from Donald Trump. He officially getting the Republican presidential nomination. Now, the U.S. Soccer Federation president feels that if Trump actually wins the general election, that the U.S., their chances of landing the World Cup could take a major hit. Is that right? Yeah, isn't that interesting? Uh, Sunil Galati, the guy that runs the Federation, says that uh, the FIFA guys uh, clearly, <laughs> who knows how they select other than you know for, for dollars under the table, but it'll be cleaner. <laughs> in the future. But one of the things that they do uh, decide to do is to pick infrastructure, corporate sponsorships, money, and political leadership. Now, he said there are numerous factors that go into winning the hosting rights for the World Cup. A leader who might be unpopular elsewhere in the world isn't necessarily a deal breaker, but yet it certainly doesn't help. And so... (laughs) We've got enough issues, and that's just another one. Uh, indeed, we have plenty of issues, Rick, don't we? Uh, let's move on. Projected number one NBA draft pick is uh, Ben Simmons this year. He has already agreed to a shoe and apparel deal with Nike worth how much? Yeah, five-year deal, $12 million bucks, $12 million. Wow. And the kid isn't even drafted yet. He didn't know where he's going to go. But, you know, sure bet he goes to Philly or L.A. It is interesting. It's right in line with the... Uh, deal that was signed by Andrew Wiggins with the Timberwolves last year, and they were going to give him a little less than that, in fact, a lot less, but they increased the offer after the Sixers and Lakers won the ping pong ball lottery because they figured that's a pretty good spot for him, especially with high visibility. So uh, it is fun to be a kid almost coming out of high school, and you got some nest egg money without even hitting your first NBA free throw. Nest egg money. Yeah, $12 million worth of nest egg money from uh, the boys over at Nike. Wow. 
Zika is a scary word, and it's going to keep numerous potential Olympians from taking the trip down to Rio come August. Uh, many top.